And in business, Nigeria's economy slowed to its lowest level in more than a year as the impact of the coronavirus pandemic took a toll on both oil and non-oil sectors of the economy. Growth in real gross domestic products stood at 1.87% year-on-year in the first quarter of 2020, the National Bureau of Statistics said on Monday. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Zainab Ahmed on Thursday said Nigeria's economy could shrink as much as 8.9% in 2020 in a worst-case scenario, 4.4% percent in a best case scenario and with stimulus the contraction could be kept to just 0.59 percent now to discuss this with me is gospel obili ceo of streetnomics hello gospel thank you for joining me on the news hi irene thank you for having me certainly now on the comments of the minister of finance regarding the country's best case and worst case scenarios of the projected economic shrink. What do you, what does this portend for the average Nigerian? So it's quite, um, um, it's quite, it's important for me to state here that I applaud the finance minister for taking cognizance of the fact that um, this would really, really eat deep into the Nigerian economy. Um, but however, for the average Nigerian, it would mean that this recession has come to stay and um, it will eat deeper than we thought, you know. And that's because also this recession comes with one thing different from what happened in 2016 slash 2017, and that, that would be loss of jobs, you know, and a shrink in consumer income, which will invariably affect consumer spending and consumption generally. And uh, because there are certainties, you have, you have a you have huge lack, lack of certainties in the air, you will also have a situation where investments will drop. And um, that con in conjunction with the oil price and COVID-19 pandemic, then we have a, a severe case of public finance dropping really bad. So I, I think generally it's going to be a very long shot for us. Um, however, I look forward to be having a recovery plan as early as possible, earlier than it took for us to get the ERGP out, so that we can begin to create smart social-related um, interventions and initiatives to help the average Nigerian. Now, some economists have said that the, calcul that the calculations, that's the actual reality of individuals by the country's GDP, doesn't do an absolute justice in reflecting current realities in terms of when you start to calculate the GDP. Now, the country's GDP dropped to a five-month low by 1.87%. What's your take on this? Yes, yeah, so I yeah, understand this conversation, and then again, you have the issue of over 16% of the Nigerian economy being informal. Uh, regardless, the GDP gives an idea of what we are dealing with, and because the figures have been consistent with economic trends and every other thing, then we can say that to an extent it's, it's reliable. But in terms of social impact and livelihood, and dealing with the essence of the average Nigerian, uh, it's not in quotes reliable in that sense. So what we need to do is yes, um, do as much as we can with the GDP numbers, but understand that the issues we are dealing with here are more in the social space than just a macroeconomic issue. People are losing jobs, people are hungry, you know, security is being threatened and the likes. So we're, we're, we're expecting a bit more, like I mentioned earlier, of smarter social interventions because with what we have with the empire and the likes, we, we realize that. Um, these things are over time uh, past the problem, not necessarily dealing with the issues on ground. Yes, you may want to talk about stimulus also, but stimulus will, all, all, will only manage the problem to a point, you know, but it doesn't um, fix the issues. And being the fact that there are structural issues already containing the Nigerian economy, it means that these challenges are going to last longer than we thought. Gospel yeah. Abele, for the sake of time, that's all we can have, but it's always a pleasure having you on the news. Thank you for having me. Yeah, have a Certainly. good time.